Hi everyone, I'm Joanne Smith. I play the auto harp and uh, this little auto harp right here is part of um, an article that I wrote for Auto Harp Quarterly magazine. You go to autoharpquarterly.com and uh, subscribe. There's an article in there that I call uh, The Pentatonic Project and it talks all about this little auto harp right here. I found uh, um, an older Oscar Schmidt auto harp that's a lot like this. Hold on. Um, looks a lot like this okay and I found it in an online auction and the body was in good shape and uh, all it needed was a little TLC new set of strings uh, new chord bars uh, a set of fine tuners a few other things and um, a little bit of experimentation and one of the things that I wanted to do with this was to try out playing with pentatonic chords so what I did was I took this uh, auto harp and I put a new set of chord bars on it, tuned it in the key of C, and I put uh, some pentatonic chord bars on it. Now what's pentatonic? It's a chord with only five notes. Okay, so here's one. Okay. And here's another one. And one more. Where is it? There it is. And what I thought would be fun to do is, as long as I had pentatonic chord bars on there, why not configure them so that they would lock into position? So um, if I take this and I engage this little locking mechanism right down here, these little things that hold the bar down. Now, I don't have to use a hand at all when I'm uh, playing. Uh, that way I can use it for a backup to if someone singing a really pretty rendition of Amazing Grace, which is a pentatonic tune by the way, only five notes. Uh, you can just kind of sit here in the background and it'll all fit because all the notes in that tune are just five. There's just five notes so it all blends together and sounds really cool. You can also use a couple of regular chord bars. I think there's a C major works. Okay, and also D minor because those chords um, actually have three of the notes that are in that pentatonic scale so those work some of them come up sounding uh, like an open fifth like this which is really kind of cool and you can use that as well so um, one of the things that I wanted to try to do was to have this set up so to show you how um, the original configuration of the auto harp which came from a zither which is basically the auto harp is a zither it just happens to have chord bars on it that's what makes it an auto harp but you can see how if you just pluck out the notes and if they're especially if there are only five of them open and ringing right now you might be able to actually pick out a melody so here we go with amazing grace some chord bar, a uh, little major and minor chords.
So anyway, it's kind of cool. It's a neat sound. Um, and so one of the things that I also wanted to do in addition to be able to, to play it as a pentatonic harp, I also wanted to be able to play it, um, utilize it as a regular single key auto harp. So I went ahead and configured it with my normal uh, array of um, alternative chords that I generally put on my um, uh, single key auto harps. Um, so it can be utilized without having, using the uh, pentatonic uh, locks like this and just used as a typical single key auto harp. So let's see, what's the one I've been working on lately? Uh, Gliding Dance of the Maidens, and I'm still working on it. It's a little rough, but bear with me, I'll play you a little bit of it. Let's see. Anyway, um, that's a, a, just using it as a regular normal single key auto harp. There's also something else that I wanted to experiment with this too, so that's kind of a multi-faceted little experimentation thing that I did here. Um, I noticed that uh, in utilizing suspended fourth chords, and all of this is explained in the article, so there's your amen chords, um, like a... Oops, that's a major seven. Okay, but I found that if you took these um, suspended fourth chords and combined them with other chords on the chord bar array, that you would end up with a drone like this. Let's see if I can get it to work now. Yeah. Okay, and then there's. Okay, and those can be used to great effect in uh, some uh, other kinds of tunes as well. So, um, here's Down in the River to Pray. No, wait a minute. Basically, um, about it. I'm still learning. I'm still discovering new things and new chord combinations and everything that I can do with um, with the auto harp. And so, I'd encourage you to give it a try yourself. This isn't hard to do. It's not a weekend project. It's not an overnight project. It generally takes uh, several days, a few weeks, depending on how much time you've got to work on it. Uh, but it's worth it because in the end, what you end up with is something that you've uh, created, and um, if you're um, determined and can have a little elbow grease and be patient, you can do this. It's really not that hard. It just takes a while. That's all. And um, you can put on any kind of chords that you want, and I'd encourage you to give it a try. Don't be afraid of it. Um, it's uh, worth the effort. Because one of the things that I found out when this thing was all done, the first time I picked it up and strummed it, it was like, oh my goodness, I, I was not prepared for how sweet that this little thing sounded. Um, it, it's very ringy and very sweet. So, um, so anyway, give it a shot. And don't forget, go to autoharpquarterly.com, subscribe. And you can read the article that goes into depth about how I came up with this little thing. And, um, and in the meantime, there's 
all kinds of good stuff in there too. So um, in the meantime, thanks for watching and happy harping. And I'll see you along the road somewhere. And in the meantime, take care and thanks for watching.